everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make a theatre stage card. This has been highly requested. I've had loads of people ask me to make this card and it seems to be doing the rounds at the moment. Now there is a tutorial from the pop-up channel on YouTube and um, he shows you how to make them along with lots of other cool pop-up cards and bits and pieces. So I'll share his link below and you know head over there and have a look for some more inspiration. But this is my take on it. So I've done a five by seven version and I've made a few little changes and just added my little twist to it because I think that will help with the overall kind of movement and mechanism and stuff. So yeah, this is what it does. So you pull the sides and then you have this really cool scene. And I've been waiting for something that would fit this style card. And as soon as I received the circus collection, I just thought what perfect you know collection to use for this. So you've got the sign there with the show on, which I've covered with Nouveau drops and glossy accents. You can just see it catching the light. I've got the tickets there behind the seal and he's got some gloss on the ball. And then you've got the strong man. You've got the lion and the monkey and the drum there. And right at the back, there you go, you can see him better. You've got the clown juggling. And then you've got the sign that says the greatest showman and you've got the uh, the ringmaster here kind of welcoming you into the show. So and then the whole thing just folds flat like so. Like I said, we'll fit in a five by seven envelope and then on the back you have all that space to stamp and write your message. So yeah, let me show you how to make it. Okay, so I'm going a little bit bolder with this card today. So I'm gonna have yellow with red curtains and this really nice pattern paper. So these are the stamps that I've used. So again, it's from the Circus collection and it's the Circus and the Greatest Show stamps there. And then that's the pad, which is the, again, I always say, but I've just cut out some of the elements that you can cut there, but it's the six by six version. Then I've got some rectangle dies and I also pulled out these pieces and I thought they looked brilliant for the, the kind of drapes, the curtains as you, you enter the circus. And they're from the Paper Discovery Window Tag Edition set. And I've also used this one. I'm gonna try this one on this card. You can just, again, if I just open it up, so I don't know how well you can see them, but they're just here on the sides. And I just think it just added a really nice effect. So I've done all of that and I've made my own little bits of bunting there as well. And for the back of this one, I've already stamped this happy birthday here, which is from the Woodware Big Birthday Words. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've already prepared this piece here, which is two pieces of five by seven stuck together with Kalal glue, and it gives you this solid piece. Now, you know, whenever you work with a kinetic card, you want your card to be nice and strong to be able to, you know, hold any kind of push and pull mechanism or any kind of pop-up piece. You know, you want your card to be strong. And I found that this card, especially when you're pulling it in and, and then pushing it back, sorry, pulling it out and pushing it back in, it's that pushing in where you want that card to be nice and, um, and straight. And um, so that's what I've done there, two pieces of card stuck together. And then these here are all slightly smaller because just by the, the length is all the same. So they're all seven in length, but the height is four and seven eighths of an inch. And by just bringing it down that little bit will help everything slide, I think, a bit better. So I didn't do that on that other card. That was all four pieces of five by seven. But I think if you just have your two five by sevens there and then these three as seven by four and seven eighths. OK, so just bring it down just that little bit there. You'll see mine's shorter. All right, and they're all seven long. So one of them is gonna be for the back. So we're not gonna do anything with that apart from stick this on the back here, okay? So this here is six and three quarters by four and three quarters. And then that is on the top there at six and a half by four and a half. And you just wanna stick that on the back. And then we'll flip it over and we'll be sticking more stuff onto that. So I'll do that in a second, so it's done. These two pieces here are going to be our side sections. So along the seven inch side, you want to score at one and a quarter and three and a half. And you want to do that on both pieces. So one and a quarter and three and a half. Okay. And you're going to just burnish both of them so they're mounting folds. We're going to just do a few pencil lines on it so that we know where to cut. Like so. You're also going to want these two pieces here. And these are the optional pieces. These are for those inside kind of um, strips where you can have elements stuck to. But you might decide you just want to do them without, which is totally fine. So you'll want one piece that's one by seven and a half. And you want to put a little marker at half an inch and seven inches. And then just flip it and do that again, half an inch and seven inches. 
then pop it along this way and you want to start scoring at a quarter of an inch from where you've done that little marker. So there's my quarter of an inch down to that other marker and again then at three quarters of an inch from that marker down to the other marker. So if I bring that up you'll see where I've just done, so there's that half inch, I've just started that score line all the way down so it finishes at the seven inch one there. Because what we're going to do later is we're going to cut out this piece here and we're going to cut out this piece here. So we're just left with this piece like so. So that's that one and then this one here is six and a half by one inch and again you want to do a little marker at half an inch and at six then flip it again half an inch and six and then pop it along the one inch side and just come down to where that marker starts at a quarter of an inch in all right so a quarter of an inch down to that six and then again three quarters of an inch here down to the six again you can just see where I've started those score lines okay once I cut it again that will make some that will make more sense as well so I'll get rid of the scoreboard okay so now we want to do a few pencil marks on these two pieces here okay so this is if you want to have these pieces inside if you don't then just fast forward or you can just watch this bit and maybe you'll decide to do it on another card so where you've got your, you've got this small section, then you've got that section, and then you've got this one here. This is going to become one of those, the, the front panel that we pull out. This is the side, and this piece we're going to stick onto the back. If I open up this card, again, it will help just explain all that. So you can see this piece here is this piece here. So we want to make these cuts, which is where you can see inside here, these pieces are coming out. So with this one, with the shorter piece on the right hand side, the larger piece on the left, you're working within this section here. And you want to come up each of those score lines by half an inch. So just come up and mark a little pencil mark and then just join that pencil mark up. And then you want to come up one and one eighth of an inch, put a pencil mark on that score line, come along here, come up again one and one eighth, put a pencil mark and join those up. You're then going to come in half an inch, draw a pencil mark down, joining those two together, and then you're going to come across one and a quarter, and again draw a pencil line down, joining those two lines up. Now it's these lines here that we're going to cut down. So this gap here is five eighths of an inch, okay, and this section on this is half an inch, so it will move freely within those slots. Now I'm going to do this one and then I'm just going to line up the slots on this piece. You don't have to do all the pencil marks again on this one. We're just going to kind of, this will be our template. And if you want to have a white piece, you know, and make this as a template piece, if you're going to make a lot of these cards, then I would do so. So what I'm going to do now is just cut slightly to the left of that pencil line. And just cut down nice and straight. And then I'm going to cut right on the pencil line. You just basically want to make a tiny little slot like so and then I'm just going to cut along the top and the bottom just to remove that piece. So if you've made my triple flip card it's exactly the same thing that we're doing here. So can you see now I've got a nice little opening for us to be able to slide these through. So again on this one here I'm just cutting just in front of that pencil line like so and then I'm going to cut now right on the pencil line. So you're kind of making it, it's like, you know, a millimetre wide, but it will just allow that card to, to move freely. There we go. So now I'm going to rub out all of those pencil marks. Okay, so now I'm going to sit that one right over the top and I'm just going to grab a thin pen. What I'm just going to draw through. Like so. And then you just want to cut that out again. Okay, so that's all you need there. So now we can start putting everything together. We want the back piece here, so actually I just need to stick. Actually, I'll do that in a minute, just in case I get any marks or anything. So you want the back piece. 
that you will have this stuck onto. Your front piece is that one where you've done two of them together, okay? So, um, I'm just thinking it might be worthwhile, actually one of them you're going to flip over as well, so you might want to just burnish your score lines, like so. So you're going to have them like that, opposites, okay? And I'm just thinking it might be worth putting your pattern paper on this now, whilst you haven't put it all together. So these here, these are two pieces of three and a quarter by four and three quarters. So I'm going to stick one of them on here. If you want to cover this bit as well and then cut these pieces, you can. And these are going to be stuck on the back, so you won't see them anyway. And then we'll stick the inside. I'm using this plain navy piece here. Um, we'll do that when it's stuck together. So I'm just going to stick these down for the moment. Okay, so that's those stuck down. And again, that's all going to add more strength to this card. So next, this is the back piece. You're going to add some glue onto this tab here. Turn it over and you're going to stick it with this piece here. And it'll be exactly the same height because it's that four and seven eighths of an inch. Okay. And then open that one up. And just make sure it's all burnished really well. And then this one here, you want to pop your glue again over that section. And you're going to stick this one, turn it over, and you're going to stick it at this end. Like so. And again, just open that one up and just really burnish that score line, like so. Okay, so you can start to see now, when you fold that in half, it will line up perfectly and be that 5 by 7 size below. Okay, they're exactly the same. So again, you can see now where it opens up. Now here is my the back of my stage or my scene. So I've got this piece of cardstock here that's going to sit perfectly there. I just think my stamped images will, if I just grab one of them, for example there, they really stand out against that dark background. So you can do pattern if you want. I've got the stripe in the back of this one here. You can just see it. So it's entirely up to you. So I'm going to stick that down as well. I forgot to say this piece here is four and a quarter by four and three quarters. Okay, so whilst that's all drying, we're going to grab these two pieces here. And all you want to do is cut up the little score lines either side and then just remove all of that middle section. Make sure it's nice and neat and straight because this is you are going to see these and you're going to be sticking you know, your elements onto them, like so. Again, the bottom, and then cut all the way down. And then again, the same with this piece here. Okay, like so. So now the smallest one is going to go at the back. Now the easiest way to do this is if you fold down the top and the bottom, so you kind of, you know, folding them in like that, and then you can feed them through, and then open it back out again on the back. Okay, it's not that it's not going to come through. It's now, you know, you stop that coming through. So again, just fold back like that, and push that one through, and again, just open it up. You can see now when you open it. Once we've got something on there as well, it won't kind of move too much, but that's the idea is that it can move freely behind that section. I've just realised that piece was too long. So it actually needs to be six and seven eighths of an inch. And you're going to do a little marker at half an inch and at three eighths, at six and three eighths of an inch, and then flip it and again do half an inch and at six and three eighths of an inch, and then pop it this way and you're going to score at a quarter of an inch from the start of that marker. So just like you did with the other one. And then at three quarters of an inch, all the way down. So I will edit in that I will give the measurements for this piece. I don't know why I've done seven and a half knowing that the card's seven long. But now you're just going to snip up just as you did with that other piece. Okay, and then again, I'm just going to fold over the sides there, pop that one through. Okay, so now when you open it up, you've got those two pieces like that.
Next we want to add the frame and cut the aperture out of that and also you want two pieces of six by half an inch and this is to connect this. So this is the front piece and we want to like cut the aperture out. So I've got my die here and this is from the Christina Griffiths Card Making Magic rectangles and this one measures um, five and seven eighths of an inch by three and a half and I'm going to pop that in here but I'm going to have it slightly higher up to the top so I've got kind of an equal you know top and sides here but the bottom's a little bit thicker so I'm just going to grab my washi tape there and I'm going to run that through my die machine now you may need to add an extra shim um, because you've got those two layers of cardstock so I'm just going to add that one there and there so it doesn't shift and just get that cut okay I think mine's gone yeah just about don't order those three, it's just a little snip at that. It's just literally like a thread holding it, but there we go. So I'll just tidy that one up. I didn't put my metal shim on that actually, so I, it would have cut through fine if I had. Just tidy that little bit there, there we go. Now what I've also gone ahead and done is that same die, I've just then got the next size up cut them both together with some red card just so I've got a frame. I didn't do it on that one but because I'm using a different colour I always like a frame. I just think that's going to look nice stuck around there and then with these pieces I can just stick behind there and I just think it gives it a really nice effect. So I'm going to, I might stick, no I should stick them on now really, yeah because I'm going to stick them a little bit further out. So I'm just going to add my glue to this frame and stick my curtains and the drapes all on this piece. And also I should say when you're sticking anything inside be careful that it's not going to interfere with the mechanism. Now I've done it on that one and it was okay but you might want to stick this after because you can still pop these in behind so you know just bear that in mind so it might be worth if you haven't done this before yet then maybe don't stick anything behind here until you've put it together and you can kind of tack it in place and just check it is going to work. Okay so there's my little theatre scene, I think it looks brilliant. So now what we want to do is with these strips here, what I think is easiest to do is basically what's going to happen is we're going to have these going around here. So if you grab one, pop it around this piece here and just fold them over so rather than score a bit like when we do a belly band just wrap it around like so and that way you get a nice can you see now it's just going to kind of slide along there and it's that piece that is just this piece here that's actually going to help you you know enable you to slide the card open so like so so remember that one's for that side and then again with this piece again make sure you've got equal amounts overhanging each end and again just wrap it around like so Okay, so now pop that to one side, bring this back in. You're going to add your glue to the tops and the bottom of this one here, and you're going to stick it behind here. If you want to do it a bit thicker, you can. The reason I've done mine half an inch is because it hides behind this half inch. Um, you know border here but because I've got the curtain here I could go up to maybe one inch but you want it to kind of be concealed behind you know this section here and also because this piece was that four and seven eighths of an inch height can you see it hides behind there nicely so you don't see any of it poking out the top so you can see there where I've stuck it so we've actually now got this open piece here and that's what this is going to slide through so like I said you can go thicker if you'd rather have this a bit wider you want the same length that I gave you so six but um, just come in a little bit just bring it you know make it a bit wider there so again with this one I'm just going to add my glue do make sure all your glue's completely dry before you start adding you know the other bits to it because you don't want it kind of catching on any of that wet glue and then setting and not moving how you wanted it to before I'm just going to stick that on the back whilst it's drying and again this will strengthen our back panel. Okay so before we thread it through you need to do your little, um, make these little notches so that you can pull it through. So I'm going to pop this just a little way into my frame there through both pieces at the same time. Like so. You see there we've got that. You can just cut that out if you want to with a little square, you know, you can or you can do square shapes 
oval shapes it's entirely up to you try and get them the same height like so and now we can thread these through so just keep testing it make sure you've got plenty of like it, it moves freely so once you get it in there can you see that moves nicely and then again this side here like so look you've got a lot of movement there and now when you fold it all flat you'll be able to pull out your sides and you have that really cool stage <laughs> i think it's awesome so much fun okay so now we can decorate and i'll talk you through a couple of little things just to bear in mind as you're doing this so i've got all of my images kind of um cut and colored and i've put my glossy accents on it should most of them are dry there's a few where it might be a little bit tacky but I should be able to get it all stuck in okay so what you want to do is you'll notice I've got the strong man on the front one there because you can only have although you've got a nice big amount there you can't have you can't have loads of things stuck on it because the card needs to be able to fold fold in on itself and if you look inside as it closes this you know this strip here becomes you know much much smaller inside so look see it's just starting to close on him so it has to be something quite small on that front one. On the back one, you can see by the time this closes, you've got, you know, about, well, you've got a real, you've got a much wider or longer section there to be able to stick things on. So just make sure whatever you stick on there, as you go to close it, just check that it does all fold flat, okay? So I'm going to, see I'm wondering this time whether to have the actual showman kind of there I think that looks really cool so I might have him in a slightly different position and then have the seal and the lion behind him on the back there because I think they really stand out and then I think I might have the clown on the front this time and the strong man on the front and um, yeah we dress this one up a little bit different but I think it looks really does look like a theatre sta set or stage so I'm going to start sticking these all down like two different arrangements really because that one there you can see I've got the the strong man and then the clown and the lion are actually stuck on the very back there and then I've just got the little monkey you can just see him inside there on that back one and then the seals on the front and then this one here I've got nothing stuck on the back apart from the sign and the two clubs I've actually got the lion and the clown on the same one together but you can see when it closes they all fit within their kind of sections okay so just keep checking it I've added my bunting I've got the show sign and then I've got the monkey on the front there with the tickets I think it looks cool and on the back not to get it all because it's still a little bit tacky on my glossy accent so I'm trying to be careful with it but I've got the strong man there I think it looks awesome it reminds me of the opening scene to the greatest showman with the song playing and then he just opens up his arms like that and you go into the circus I just love it. I think it's brilliant. So hopefully this has um, inspired those that have requested this. I've put my twist on it. I think it look, works brilliantly with this circus collection. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to be making some more. I'm going to try some different sizes. Like I said, this one was my prototype, so I'll probably be keeping this one displayed in my room. But that one there, that works and moves really freely with those little changes in the sizes. So yeah. There it is. So thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already and I'll be back very soon with another video. Bye!